Welcome back to Ozarks Fox AM. Kaylee is live at the Galois talking about, about why the live uh, music venues are especially vulnerable during this time. Kaylee. That's right. Good morning, Jeremy. Good morning, Kelly. Last week, we talked a little bit about how the Galois has had some famous feet walk through those front doors. Elvis, Casey Musgraves, Dave Chappelle, just among a few. But with tours canceled and seats empty, who is financially holding that burden? Uh, here's a look at the economic impact that COVID-19 has had on the theater industry. We're home to the Springfield Regional Opera. We're home to the Mystery Hour, uh, our local late night television show. We've had people get married on the stage. And on films, concerts, and comedy shows. When I was 22, I got involved with the Russian Mafia. And you'll see the Galois does it all. The theater ultimately is just to create memories. We've been doing it since 1926. But in recent months, the seats have remained empty. Theaters are first to close, last to open. Economically, COVID-19 hit the entertainment sector the hardest. But the reality is the event industry is about four times the size of the airline industry in North America. So the airline industry employs about 349,000 people. The entertainment industry in North America employs about 1.6 million people. But the earliest relief program through IDLE, that first CARES Act, provided the, those guys that are 25% of our size, 10 times the amount of assistance that the theaters got. And with national tours postponed or canceled this summer, money is running thin. Right now I'm at 50% occupancy under current guidelines, but for national tours, that's not, going, that's not enough. They work on a margin. Tours, artists in Nashville uh, and elsewhere, they're not getting on buses right now. And it's not only the theaters that are hurting, it trickles far beyond that. That's really what the theater also is, is an economic engine for downtown. You know, they don't just come here. They pay for parking, they go to a restaurant, they have a drink afterwards. Maybe they go to retail to buy something to wear to that special night. Pulling in not just local, but global consumers. 2019 alone, we saw over 1,071 different zip codes come into, into the Gilroy's Theater through our ticketing system. We saw over 39 states and four countries. If things continue to stay closed and no more funding is available, reports say over 90% of these independent venues will close permanently. The theater itself is committed not only to preserving the space, but the second half of our mission is to enhance the quality of life in the Ozarks through arts, education, and entertainment. A small dose of positivity and a big shift in programming aims to keep them afloat. We also are looking at building some movie programming that we would show this summer that would actually be date nights where you could come in. The seats would obviously be socially distanced and there's a different process for entering. A nice reminder that it's always been more than just a show. It's about keeping a space alive that contributes so much more than just revenue to the community. Now, Jeff Steele says that any help is helpful to the Galois Theater. For more ways to donate, uh, just head on over to their website at Galois Theater. That's theater with an R -E instead of ER.com. Guys? All right, so that's ways that we can help is just to go and donate to that website. And that's great. And I know they bring in millions of dollars, not just to there, but to all of the Springfield area. Oh, for sure. Uh, Kaylee, when do they plan to reopen the shows? That is still undecided. The, they obviously have safety as the top priority, not only for their employees, but for their uh, consumers and patrons as well. So uh, we'll stay updated and keep you guys updated on when they return. All right. Thanks so much, Thank Kaylee. We you. love the Galois and can't yes. wait for it to reopen. Okay. All right. Hey, guess what? Tomorrow is Thursday, yes. which means uh, entry uh -huh. journal time. Exactly. So Sean Paul and Julianne sent mm -hmm. us a little sneak peek at what we can expect tomorrow. All right, let's look. The Edison ghost phone, the Tesla spirit radio. In 1920, Tom Edison and Nikola Tesla independently experimented in inventing machines to communicate with spirits and ghosts. Even today on shows like Ghost Adventures and The Holzer's Files, they are making use of something called a spirit box, which is similar, but a much more evolved version of a concept that originated a hundred years ago during the Spanish flu pandemic, when more than 50 million people died from an incurable disease.
The grieving survivors were desperate to connect with the poor souls that they had lost. And inventors Edison and Tesla believed that they could provide an electronic device to help people connect with their deceased relatives. Edison called his the ghost phone. Tesla called his a spirit radio. I spoke with our friend, New York Times bestselling author, Bill Burns, and he explained how these two brilliant men thought this could all be possible. Intriguing as always. Mm-hmm. See, I don't... Uh, I'm just going to say it, Kel. Just say it, because I was going to if you weren't. Go I don't ahead. think you can talk to the dead people. I just don't think that. <laughs> well, I don't talk to dead people, and I don't <laughs> want to talk to dead people. Now, I do think sometimes in a dream, you know, yes. your loved ones can come through, and, and yeah. you can have dreams about them. Um, See, this because I always... I think my grandmother who passed, you know, mm -hmm. I think she comes to me in my dreams. Right. Now, if I went to someone and did a seance, oh. you know what my mom said? My mom said... The good Christian woman that my grandma was, she, she ain't <laughs> never going to come through through a medium no, in a seance. No, and I understand that people miss their loved ones and they yeah. want to connect with them. Uh, and they want because it's the unknown. We don't know exactly where they are. We want to talk to them. We miss them. But I don't believe we're supposed to do those things. I think once they're gone, we need to look forward to seeing them again. Uh, but mm -hmm. I don't think we're supposed to delve into that world that's well, not I love it world. when she comes my grandma comes and talks to me in my dreams oh no that's oh, I love fine it. but yeah, it's yeah, not yeah. like it's not like you're yes, trying to correct. bring yeah. her in yeah 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 and I'm not that's trying totally to totally different yeah and so and certain mm -hmm. times you know you feel a a presence because I think God knows you need that Absolutely. at that moment because like I'll be in my yard or looking at roses that yeah. remind me of her and there'll be a, like a yeah. butterfly or a ladybug yeah. and you know I think those trigger memories which makes you feel closer you absolutely know. yeah there's nothing wrong with that absolutely yeah. I've had different mm -hmm. people say that they've had dreams that were maybe even messages that were really real that uh, helped them in their life going forward from from loved ones and I believe in that so I think that's cool and you know as humans we just need to have that we always look for the hope I think you know? uh, we got to have a hope you got to have sure. a hope you got to have a dream you do and I saw something on Facebook today said don't call it a dream call it a plan and I was like I oh, love that yeah that's true because really you can't just sit around and dream about it if you if you want it to come true you need to put some action behind put that. some action oh, behind yeah, that there you go that's awesome. All right, hey, don't go anywhere because we have so much more fun coming up in the second hour. We sure do. I mean, it's like crazy. Yeah. I heard we won another award, Kelly. You want to win another award? We already did, I heard. Uh, we won a couple. <laughs> <laughs>